Hello. Now we are going to look at frequency tables. Before we deal with frequency tables, we need to remind ourselves of what the word frequency means. So frequency is how often we see something. In science, we might come across it as the frequency of sound, and that means how often a peak or a trough would pass us per second. So we're always counting how often we see something when we're talking about frequency. Or if we met someone a lot, we would say we met them frequently. So we're still talking about how often we see someone. So in this example here, we're going to imagine that we're standing at a road and we are going to uh, count up all of the cars of different colors. So in this example, I'm going to say that we only saw blue cars, green cars and yellow cars while we were running our experiment. So over a particular amount of time, we see our blue cars, our green cars and our yellow cars and we count them up. And this is a simulation of that situation. First, we saw a blue car and then we saw a green car and then a green car and then a green car and then a yellow car and so on. Now, how would we start to gather that information and instead of this jumbled looking list where the letters are all kind of blending into each other and it's quite hard to read. Instead of this mess, what we could do is put this information into a frequency table that would keep track of how often we saw each color. So what we do is we have a column in our table. So this is our frequency table. It's a table that we are laying stuff out very neatly in. Uh, that's about frequency, how often we see something. So a frequency table. So we label the different categories that we are dealing with. Blue cars, green cars and yellow cars. We're going to deal with the tally, which is how we're going to count up the number of each type of car. And then we're going to convert the tally into the frequency. In total, how much did we see each color of car? So we start off here and we got one blue car. So what I do is I put a line down for one in the tally section for the blue car. Then I saw a green car and then another green car and then another green car. So I've now got three uh, lines that I've got in my green section. And then I saw a yellow car. You can see I'm doing this neatly. I'm not putting this right in the middle of my tally box, keeping it up in the uh, top left hand corner because I might end up counting a lot of these things. So I want to make sure I leave myself space to count up all of my colors. Then I'm on um, uh, another blue and another blue. And then another yellow. You can see how we're doing our count up and then a green and then a green and then a green and then a green. And now we can start to see that if having four of these sticks sitting together, we're running into the same problem as we had with the lists of colors. So what we need to do is keep track of the number of greens that we've got and number of blues that we've got. And it's starting to get difficult to do that by just putting dashes. So what we deal with the, do with the tally is we actually bundle things in groups of five. We put down four sticks and then we put a line through them that says I've now got a group of five. So I do my grouping uh, in my tally in bundles of five. So four sticks and then a diagonal that says I've got a group of five. And I have one more. So up to here, I've got six greens. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see this is quite difficult to read, even in quite a short list like this. So it's important that we are putting our matches down as we are coming to our greens in our list. Now we've gotten up to here. We have blues. We have one more blue, two more blues, three. One, two, three. So I have my group of five and then I have one, two, three. And then I have two yellows. Brings me up to four yellows. And blues, I have that many. So now I have gone through all of my uh, list and I have tallied up all of the colors that I got. But now I don't want to be dealing with these groups of five. I actually want to just write these as normal numbers. So here I have five and five is 10. So in total, I saw 10 blue cars and I have a group of five and one is six green cars. And I just have my four stakes. So there's nothing complicated there. That's just four. So I have my frequency table now completed. 
I know I saw 10 blue cars, 6 green cars and 4 yellow cars. And that's how I complete my frequency tables. Let's answer some questions. How many cars did I how many cars uh, are there in total? Well, if I saw 10 blue cars, 6 green cars and 4 yellow cars and those are all the different types of cars I saw, the total would have to be 10 plus 6 plus 4 would be adding up to 20. So I saw 20 cars in total. And remember, storytelling is really important in math. So instead of just writing down the number 20, I've said the total is 10 plus 6 plus 4 is equal to 20 cars. I've not just answered the question. I've told the story of how I answered the question. And this is critical to doing well in maths. Part two. The most frequently seen color. So the most frequently seen color, we know frequently is how often we see something. So the most frequently seen is what color did we see most? And in maths, this has a special name. The most frequently seen thing is called the modal thing. So the mode or the modal color is going to be the most frequently seen color. So this is an important word for our statistics. So the most frequently seen or the modal color is going to be blue because 10 is bigger than six or four. So all we can really say here is blue. We can't do much explaining beyond that. It's the most frequently seen color. What fraction of what fraction of the cars uh, are yellow? So I know I have four yellow cars and I have a total of 20 cars. So what fraction of the cars are yellow? Well, I have four out of 20 cars are yellow. So my yellow cars would be four out of 20, but I shouldn't leave it like that. I have a common factor of four top and bottom. So what I can do is divide above and below by my common factor of four. Uh, and I end up with a fifth. So the correct answer there would be a fifth of my cars are yellow. I would have to simplify my fraction to get full marks. And then finally, a more slightly more complicated question. Per what percentage of the cars are not yellow? So what percentage of the cars are not yellow? Well, there are two different ways of doing this, and we're going to look at both of them. So I know I have 20 cars in total. So not yellow, I'm going to call that NY for not yellow. And we're dealing with the numbers here. So the number of cars that are not yellow would be 20 minus the four that are yellow. So there are 16 that are not yellow. And then to get a percentage, so the percentage not yellow, would be 16 out of 20 and I want this as a percentage so I would want to get my denominator of 100 so what do I need to do I need to multiply above and below by 5 which gives me 80 out of 100 is equal to 80 percent or the other way the more advanced uh, way of thinking about this that we want to try and guide ourselves towards is to think in terms of fractions entirely so if I wanted to know the number that are not yellow or the percentage that are not yellow or the fraction that are not yellow, so not yellow would be equal to the total minus those that are yellow. That's effectively what we did here. But could we do it in terms of fractions? So not yellow. Well, what would be our total? Well, that would be 20 out of 20 or one if you wanted to write it that way. So one would be our total fraction or our total percentage. 100 percent would be 100 out of 100 for our total. Minus uh, four out of 20. For our yellows, we have the same denominator, so we end up with 16 out of 20. Uh, and again, we multiply by five over five. in order to get up to 80 out of 100, which is at 80%. And if we can think in terms of this, that our total is one uh, or 100% or 20 out of 20, this is a better way to think about it in the long run. But this is good 
as well. If we can do this, we're doing well. If we can do, think about it this way, we're doing very well. And that is what we need for our frequency tables.